Hey guys, the hunt for the golden party hat has been going on for just over a week now, but I'm sure some of you are still working towards finding enough shards to create your very own party hat. I wanted to help you guys out by going over some of the best and fastest methods for getting your golden party hat shards. But before we start, I want to see what your experience has been with the golden party hat hunt so far and just how long on average it took you guys to get your own shards. Let me know in the comments, and with that being said, let's jump into the video. So first of all, the golden party hat can be made by collecting 8 of the possible 11 obtainable shards in the game, and you must be a member to partake in this event. There are some free shards that you can obtain, and you will get one shard for free by talking to the wise old man outside of the Grand Exchange. Another four shards can be obtained quite fast by buying Premier Club Membership. You can also get one for paying 30 million coins to the shady salesman behind the Grand Exchange, completing the tier 15 of the Wintumber Aurora Yak Track. And finally, the fourth shard can be obtained by completing all four parts of the Once Upon a Time quest. Now these shards, they are quite straightforward in terms of how you can obtain them. However, the other shards involve skilling, bossing, and clue hunting, which is what I will be going over in this video. Now there are a few exceptions and some things that you should note. Now, first off, there is an element of randomness to collecting these shards, but they do have a built-in bad luck protection. So as you continue to train a skill, kill a boss, or complete clue, clue scrolls, the likelihood of getting a shard grows exponentially. The bad luck protection is bound to each task, meaning your chance of getting a shard from one task can be higher than another, depending on how many times you have failed to get a shard. Also, protein items will work for the gathering and artisan tasks. The shard from the treasure trails has a chance to be awarded when a casket is received at the end of a trail, not when opening caskets. And a higher clue difficulty does have a higher chance of obtaining a shard. Also, when you are obtaining a shard, if your inventory is full, it will go straight to your bank. Um, you are unable to obtain shards from using elite training dummies as well as gaining experience through herbicide, seedicide, and silverhawk boots. So you won't want to use any of these if you are hunting for shards since you can't get them through this. Also, training at a clan citadel does not count either. So now that you know the basics, I will be going into how you can obtain each of the shards from training combat skills, gathering skills, artisan skills, and support skills. Now starting off with the combat uh, shard, the first method that I highly recommend you guys do is fighting Krill Tsutsaroth. This boss can potentially give you the chance at up to three shards at once. So first off, you will get the chance at the combat shard and the boss shard, since you will be getting combat experience and marks of war. But if you do happen to get a demon or a greater demon slayer task, you will have a chance for the sh support shard as well. So for Krill, I do recommend uh, this setup that I, that I am using. The most important pieces is the attuned ectoplasmeter and the demon horn necklace. I am using magic and also the Inquisitor's Staff since it does get a buff against Krill, um, but the Attuned Ectoplasmon or Demon Horn Necklace allows me to automatically scatter the ashes that are dropped upon killing either Krill or its minions. Now the Demon Horn Necklace, it will make it so once the ashes are scattered, I will restore some prayer points. And one thing um, just to note from this is that you will also be getting prayer XP from this method. And while it was announced that you cannot get a shard from Herbicide, Seedicide, and Silverhawk Feathers, we haven't heard anything about the Ectoplasminer, which leads me to believe that you are able to get a shard from training Prayer this way. So that just means that the Comet Shard should come even faster with this method. Another option that you could go with is Abyssal Demons. You will want a similar setup for these creatures since they too drop ashes, and I highly recommend the Attuned Ectoplasminer and Demon Horde Necklace again, since it should give you that extra chance at getting the combat shard. 
Also, you should be able to kill anywhere from 1500 to 2000 Abyssal Demons per hour, which will give you a lot of chances at the Combat Shard, especially if you are getting Prayer XP for every kill as well. Now, if you do get a Slayer Contract from Marcus at the bottom of the Slayer Tower, you will be getting a bit of Slayer XP for each kill you are getting on these Abyssal Demons. Um, that means you should have a possibility at uh, actually getting uh, the Support Shard as well. So for the Gathering Skills, there isn't really an overpowered method like the two methods for Combat Shards. However, there is still a few good ones. This first method will give you a chance at both the Gathering Shard and the Artisan Shard. And that is through woodcutting with the always a day's relic. Now I don't have this relic currently so I can't really show you what it does. But basically it will give you a 100% chance to create a fire when you are chopping a log giving you fire making XP. So you will be getting the woodcutting XP for the chance of the gathering shard and then you will also automatically burn the cut logs for fire making XP which will give you a chance at the artisan shard. Now the next two methods are more AFK methods for gathering the shard. First off you can fish at the Priftinus waterfall. This is a nice AFK method since the fishing location does not move. But alternatively, you can train mining at the Corrupted Sarin Stones for another AFK chance at the Gathering Shard. Now, aside from the unique method of using the Always A Day's Relic to get the Artisan Shard, you could also use a few different methods for this shard as well. First off, I highly recommend using Protein Logs for this shard. We already know that using Protein Items does give you a chance at the Golden Party Hat Shard. Um, so, training uh, fire making through protein logs is an excellent option. It is fully AFK, you just need to make sure that you do not log out, um, and you will be getting a chance at this shard as you go. Not only that, uh, protein packs, um, they are best to be used on logs in terms of sheer XP, so you might want to just go through these anyway. And if you wanted to save your proteins, another AFK method for this shard would be to train using the Harmonian Harps in Priftinus for AFK crafting XP. You will also get some construction XP when you do tune the harps. And finally, for the support skill, there are various methods that can be used. If you haven't gotten the combat shard, then doing Slayer would probably be an excellent choice, especially if you were able to get a task that can be done through a boss. Some popular Slayer tasks that would allow you to fight a boss through it um, would be tasks like dragons or demons, that way you could go through Elite Dungeon 2, or you could go and fight Krill. Another really great method for getting this shard is through safe cracking and I do believe this is actually the fastest way to get this shard um, just because um, in order to get these shards it is based on a tick system rather than the amount of XP that you are gaining um, and doing safe cracking does get you a lot of XP rapidly um, so I do think this is an awesome method to get the shard as well. Now another way you could get the shard is just through elite dungeons. Again, as I said, if you have that dragon slayer task, it would make it even better. But just going through elite dungeons does give you some dungeoneering XP, which would give you a chance at the, uh, the support shard as well. Um, and not only that, you would have a chance at the combat shard, of course, and you would have some marks of war, so you would have a chance at the boss shard as well. Now we have gone through a bit more click intensive methods, but if you are looking for that AFK method for the support shard, then you're probably the best option is the manual auto cycles that are located in the empty throne room. These will give you fully AFK agility XP and the only thing you need to watch out for is logging out every 5 minutes. While I don't really have any tips for obtaining the Clue Scroll Shard, I would just recommend you to do whichever tier clue you are most comfortable with. The Shard does have a higher chance at being obtained through harder clues, but of course the harder clues do take longer. 
So it would seem quite balanced, and I just recommend doing the clues that you enjoy the most. Personally, I will be avoiding this shard since I don't really enjoy going through a lot of clues. And finally, the boss shard. We did go through a few different options like Krill or Elite Dungeons, which would be excellent options. But again, um, you can just do whatever boss you enjoy the most. I do like the idea of AFK and Krill, especially since it does give you a chance at the combat shard and potentially the support shard with a Slayer task. Um, but you can do some more active bosses. And if you are someone who does just enjoy bossing in general and someone that does it frequently, then you really shouldn't have any worry getting this shard. There is a ton of time left, over 30 days, so you're bound to get it at some point. I would also like to mention that the Arch Glacier is another pretty good option, especially if you only have the Flurry attack activated. This way you can fully AFK this boss, um, and it should allow you to get the boss shard quite easily as well. Anyway guys, those are all of the fastest and best methods that I could come up with for all of you. I wish you all good luck on completing the golden party hat, and once again, let me know in the comments below how your hunt is going. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.